Hey folks, it's Pastor Dave again, and we are at part four in our series on communion and sacraments. In part one, we talked about what a sacrament was. Part two, we talked about why in the world God would come through bread and wine. In part three, last time, my favorite, we talked about God's grace and how it fills us up infinitely. If you missed any of those, go ahead and scroll back and see them. Now we're going to talk about the big question everybody wants to ask once they find out that God is giving them this blessing or this gift or being with them, however you want to say it. <gasps> Am I worthy? And we should stop for a minute because we just spent a lot of time saying that these gifts were God's and given to us because God loves us. Isn't it curious that the first thing we want to do is turn this around and make it about us? Am I worth this? What have I done? How have I earned this? And you can almost hear God saying, hey, dummies, you got this because I love you. And I love you whether you're worth it or not, because duh, that's how love works. So I think at first, the best thing we can do is just exhale for a second and say, Really, my worthiness or unworthiness doesn't determine the fate of the universe because I'm not the center of the universe. Now, in our Lutheran confessions, what we say is, if you're worried about being worthy, here's what you need to know. First of all, you're not. None of us are. None of us are coming up to receive God's grace, to receive God's love, to receive God's forgiveness because we're worth it. In fact, if we were perfect, we wouldn't need it in the first place. So let's just get that right out of the way. When we gather around communion, when God comes to us, we do not say it's, we have to be perfect first. Instead, what we say is this. We are in need. I've got emptiness I can't fill. I've done things wrong that I tried not to do, but they happened. There's a lot of stuff in the world that's broken, and I don't know how to fix it. When we put out our hands to receive communion, it's like saying, here are my hands, Lord. They're empty. They're all I have to offer. I hope that you will touch me, and I hope that you will be there, even if I'm not perfect, even if I haven't done what I should. And every time, God says, yes, I am here. Every time the bread and the wine come into our hands and we take them in, that is God saying to us, I'm still here with you. I still love you. And nothing that the world does and nothing that you do will overcome or be more powerful than that love. And so in our Lutheran confessions, we say the only thing that's necessary, if anything's necessary to be worthy, the only thing is this, that you trust that when God says, I am here for you, when you hear this is the body of Christ given for you, that this is the blood of Christ given for you, you don't have to understand the body, you don't have to understand the blood, you don't have to understand anything except this is for you. Yes, for you today and for all the people around you who are also broken and unworthy and hurting and mistaken, it's for them too. And it's for all of us together. And the sacrament creates a community out of people who individually and even together were broken and misunderstanding and in need. A community that no longer defines itself by that brokenness, but instead is filled up is blessed, carries with it God's spirit, God's grace, God's love, and is able to, together, go out into the world and pour out those same gifts into all the people's lives out there. People who think and assume they are also unworthy. People who know that neither they nor the world are perfect, but people who are also in need. You see the amazing thing that happens there? That where we came empty, we are not only filled ourselves, but we are filled to such an overflowing amount that that fullness 
spreads beyond us to all the people around us, and our sense of identity and community and place and purpose in the world are defined by that overflowing love. That's an amazing story, and that's why we commune. Join us next time for our final session about some of what that going out into the world and pouring out God's grace looks like.